I see it is officially 11 and we will kick off the session. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. I hope that you had a good week. And if it has been a cracker one like mine, uh, well, tomorrow is the weekend. So we always have time to look forward to that. Today's webinar series is going to continue on what we have already set out in part one and part two. With part three, looking at the Autodesk Civil 3D, AutoCAD Map 3D, and vehicle tracking. What can you do with this on your projects and how it will be very beneficial to yourself? So if you are joining the series for the first time, the series is titled the Civil Collaboration Webinar Series. I am your host, Shuaib Yunus. I'm the BIM Technical Specialist for Civil Infrastructure and Mining here at Baker Baines in South Africa. I'm also a Civil Design Technologist, a Civil Engineering Consultant, as well as a, an Autodesk Certified Instructor. So dealing with a lot of people throughout the globe, I have realized that the underlying issue was the actual collaboration part, especially in the civil infrastructure industry. So I thought of something and I put together this five part webinar series. The series will be working on the same model that we had started on part one. If you have missed it, the recordings are uploaded to our Baker Baines YouTube channel and more about that at the end of the webinar. But if you just jump onto YouTube and you type in Baker Baines, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as soon as the webinar is uploaded, you will get a notification. Also, if you do find yourself in a jam with time, uh, if you can't really attend the webinar at the set time, you're more than welcome to register still so that when the recording is available, you will get a notification. Uh, this webinar series will be focusing primarily on effective collaboration and not really the modeling. However, today you will see I've incorporated some of the modeling aspects to get you off and running into your project. And of course, part three, which is today, will be looking at the collaboration between Autodesk Civil 3D, AutoCAD Map 3D, as well as vehicle tracking. As you can see on the right-hand side, the software used in the series is quite a stack. It is covering all of the hero products, Civil 3D, InfraWorks, Revit, AutoCAD, and Inventor. The previous webinar covering majority of those. Uh, Recap Pro, which is going to be probably incorporated later into the series. And then, of course, today is Map 3D vehicle tracking. And maybe that list will probably get longer when we reach part five. Okay, so this is just a background for you if you have attended this for the first time. And this is the agenda for today's session. Of course, we always give an intro on who we are as Baker Baines, what we do, how we can help you. I think it's about three or four slides, quick, sweet, and short. And then we dive directly into the topic at hand, which is the collaboration part three. We're gonna be looking at some, how you can use GIS, how you can generate parking layouts, which is fantastic. It always gets a great response when I do show it exporting the striping to be used in our final model in part five. And then of course, when it comes to vehicle movement, safety, prediction, analysis, as well as design, we will be using swept path analysis as well as showing you how we can actually visualize it in 3D. And then we will conclude shortly. So this brings us to Baker Bain. So like I said, we are based in Johannesburg, South Africa but we do a lot of consulting and project work throughout Africa and abroad. We solve our customers' problems through digital transformation, helping them to design and make a better world, and that's literally what we live by. So if you wanted to see our credentials in a snapshot, there it is. We specialize in those four segments, survey and design hardware consultancy, design software consultancy, blended learning, as well as business process improvement consulting. The two main things on this slide, um, first of all, you can see we partner with a lot of technologies that we feel that will help you to design a better world. And a lot of them are backed by myself in the civil infrastructure industry. But not only that, we are a part of a niche bracket where 
We are part of the Autodesk Service Provider Select as well as the Services Marketplace Provider. This shows that we have the right professionals, the right blend of expertise to actually help you on your consulting design projects and so on. So we are, if I could use the word, pretty jacked up on our stuff and we can actually help you and consult with you on approaching projects. When it comes to the technology brands that we back, we've of course got Autodesk, everyone knows Autodesk, and primarily with AutoCAD being the game changer in the drafting space and designing space, but it has grown in leaps and bounds, being the leader in BIM-enabled technologies such as Civil 3D, InfraWorks, Revit, uh, Plant 3D, Invent, uh, 3ds Max, a lot of rendering tools and their portfolio has grown wide and is used throughout the industries around the world. So we not only sell the product, but we provide training for it. We help you to implement it and also to use it. The main thing is we help you to use it. We don't just sell it to you and let you try and figure it out and get frustrated, but we help you as much as we can to actually adopt and implement the software so you can wield it to get what you need. In terms of latest laser scanning and 3D uh, reality capture, we partner with two brands, namely Leica and Topcon. If you're looking at the Leica picture, that is the BLK360. We have done a lot of scan to boom projects with that, uh, predominantly buildings, where we've scanned the building, created, and you had a visual representation, an accurate representation of the as-built nature of the building. Um, that is a pretty nifty, small, really uh, scanning device. The top part of it literally fits, fits in the palm of your hand. Very powerful and um, yeah, very, very accurate. When you're going more rugged applications, we've got Topcon. Topcon is a leader in the construction, well, in a lot of segments. We use it pr uh, primarily in the construction game. And the machine that you're seeing there is the GTL 1000, which is the latest uh, scanning technology uh, station that they have. The one that I normally use is the GLS 2000, which can be used in a mining sites and construction sites. The range starting from 130 meters, which is the entry level, going up to right to 500 meters in length. So the scanning range is pretty impressive on that. Then if you pro joined my previous series, you should know what IDAS is. IDAS stands for infrastructure design automation suite it's used in conjunction with civil 3d and it makes it so powerful if you are a civil design professional like myself civil 3d and idas is the perfect combo when you're doing roads uh, pipe networks um, corridor design townships uh, sewer all those type of things very very impressive if you haven't seen it please go check out my previous collaboration series where i highlighted it on the intelligent stormwater design series. It's a three-part series that took you from start to finish on how you would do your stormwater design and analysis. And last but not least, CAD learning, right? So in the Autodesk uh, spectrum, there are a lot of different tools that are used in different industries, being civil, structural, mechanical, um, electrical, all, those, all of those things, HVAC. And Sometimes we have to learn on the go, be it a different product or probably recapping on a product that we haven't used in a long time or just learning it to be a better design professional. CAD learning is your tool to go to. So we are the only provider in Africa that actually uh, provides this online learning platform. Um, and it has about 50 plus of the Autodesk software that have pre-recorded demo videos or step-by-step -step videos tutorials, exercise files, as well as a skills test that you can do to monitor your progress over time. So if you wanna go learn, for example, Civil 3D, there are topics ranging from fundamentals to intermediate slash advanced that you can go and learn, upskill, practice, and apply into your own projects. And again, our contact details will be at the end. If you want any more info on whatever you see today or any questions that pop onto your mind, that will be at the end of the webinar. In terms of the segments, the, probably the last slide that we have, or second last, we major in these segments, build being anything vertical construction, so anything going to the sky, so architectural, structural engineering buildings. We pro provide support 
and consulting expertise on that. Civil infrastructure and mining, which is the space I predominantly uh, play in. So anything horizontal, so roads, bridges, um, pipe networks, those type of things. A lot of civils, gradings, platforms, earthworks. Civil is the widest uh, field, so I'm playing in that. And of course, mining when it comes to the 3D scanning, processing, and those type of things, as well as um, earthworks, stockpiles, those type of things. We do a lot of consulting work on that. Energy process plant, energy mining are very closely linked to the energy sector. And then, of course, manufacturing, uh, being a pro product design and manufacturing in uh, professionals, where you would do um, machine CNC design, sending it to the machine, getting it cut, and of course, the convergent workflow between prefab con and construction. And we bring this all together with our unique methodology called the I Adopt Consulting Methodology that's unique to Baker Baines. In a nutshell, we assess your current situation. We educate you where we can to help you fish for yourself. But if it is a bit out of your depth and you need someone to guide you along the way, you can partner with us and we can do consulting. We look at your people, process and technology and we help to facilitate positive change management in your industry, as well as facilitate and incorporate digital transformation throughout your processes. Okay, so now that you've got a quick presentation or a quick snapshot of how we do things and who we are, let's jump into the fun stuff, which is the Civil Collaboration Series Part 3. So just some background from whoever's joining for the first time, or if you missed part two or part one, this is the project scenario that I have created. So I made it very realistic to something you do in a consulting office. I have come from a civil engineering consulting office as well. So I know how the projects actually work. So a site had been identified for an office park. The site is located in Hartis Dam in South Africa. And the office park will be consisting of, consisting of a variety of civil infrastructure elements, such as roads, roundabouts, intersections, gradings, buildings, and landscape architecture. And we're required to produce a conceptual and final design vision throughout the series. So it's in South Africa, it's local, and you will see how we have done it. If you want to catch it from scratch, like I said, hit up our YouTube channel and you can catch up. So let's start off with the GIS integration between Map3D and ArcGIS. Now, if you haven't used ArcGIS online, I would strongly suggest creating an, a, a trial account, or if you do have one, great. You can also log in as a guest, but you will see what I have experienced on my project. Now, the reason why I've done this is this is most likely what's going to happen to you when you start using it. So let's have a look. So here is my model, right? The last previous one, we ended off with doing the bridge design. As you can see, the bridge is there. And on InfraWorks, you will see that there's an Autodesk connector for ArcGIS. And if I go and click on it, it will take you, might take you to a sign-in page if you're not signed in already. But here we are, you can see I'm signed in on the top right. And it picks up the extent of your model. Now on the left-hand side, these are all of the free available data that you can actually bring into your software. If you've got custom data, you could be under my content. If you're attached to a GIS group, you can see it there as well as an organization. Now in the public part of it, there's not much data that I can really use for my civil infrastructure design. But if I wanted to, I could tick any one of those boxes and select the metadata or the physical data that I could bring into my model. If you received your files in a raw format from your GIS technician, you can bring it in via Shape or SDS. So that is a, the most common option we see used in industry because people sometimes do not know how to connect to a GIS portal that has all of the data that you can leverage. So if you do get stuck and you see that there's not much you can use online, like if you look at Europe and the US, a lot of the data is freely available. But the reason why I'm showing it here in Africa, in South Africa, is we need to be realistic, right? So if you maybe contact Erri or you find a data provider that will give you access to it, 
Of course, there might be a charge for it or there might be a limited uh, access to it, those type of things. You need to find out from your provider. But once you do have access to it online, you can bring it into your model and it will be much more better for you. However, if you are working with a GIS technician, which is normally available at your municipality if you're doing works for them, or if you've got someone that is in the GIS space and they've got the data that they can export into a .shape file or an SDF file, you can bring that into your model, um, bring it in, set the coordinate system, and it should sit in exactly where it is. If you're not familiar with GIS data, like let's take, for example, piping networks, right? This is the most common one used for services. The metadata that's assigned to that is a lot. So it'll have the X, Y, it'll have the Z values, it'll have the type of pipe, the diameter, all of those things that you can bring in and create a really powerful metadata model. So when you do import it and you set the coordinate system to match that of your model, it will should sit in the exact place that it should be. And then you can make edits using the map 3D interface, which brings me to my next portion. Now this is in Civil 3D, right? Now map 3D is built into Civil 3D. You can see the ArcGIS connector is also in there. But if we go and switch to the planning and analysis workspace, which is AutoCAD Map 3D, this is where you can connect or import your data. So if you wanted to connect to your data, you can see these are all of the data providers that you can bring in ArcGIS. You've got SQL, which is a very popular one. And if you want to connect to a shapefile, SDF, SQL Lite, or a SQL server, you can bring all of that data in, okay? So let's just switch back to civil 3D. So if you don't want to go in here, I'm not sure why, you might be a bit intimidated with a new interface, but if we switch back to civil 3D, we can import a shapefile directly in this interface. So if I type in map import into my command line, it will open up a dialog box where I can bring in majority of or a lot of the as the GIS files because the shape is there, XML, SDF, CAT, those type of things. If you import that and you get your hands on that data, it makes your design much more insightful because imagine you have all of the piping data that's all the services there. You can check your covers, you can do an interference check which is built into Civil 3D to ensure that your cover is maintained and it allows for efficient construction where you don't have to go and excavate on site, hit the pipe and then see it's actually there, right? I've seen that quite a bit. So this is why I wanted to show this GIS part of it so that you can leverage the power into your designs. All right, um, if there are any questions, you can pop them into the chat box, but I will only address them at the end of the webinar just to keep the, work, the flow going much more better. So let's go into the exciting part, which a lot of people enjoy, is generating parking layouts using vehicle tracking in Civil 3D. Now, vehicle tracking can be used in AutoCAD as well. However, it's much more powerful than Civil 3D. So what you're seeing right now is the detail model of my site. So you can see we are building on the same model. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a parking layout or outline that I've got, got there in red. And I've got a roundabout. So what I'll do is just to make the screen a bit cleaner, I'm going to isolate those objects. So welcome AutoCAD users. You can use your AutoCAD commands here, like I've mentioned previously. So once I do isolate those objects, I can now see that it is much more cleaner. So you can see what's going on, right? So let's just say we're working with this part of the site. And now that we have it isolated, what I'm going to do is that parking lot, I'm gonna offset it inside to incorporate the spacing for the curbs. So I will use a 0.2 uh, spacing. And as you can see, we've got the inside curb. That's where the parking is gonna to link to. And I'm just gonna change it to yellow so that you can actually follow along with what I'm doing. So this is our shape. I also did not just choose a rectangular shape. I chose something that's a bit different. And we're gonna go and select the parking layout. 
So if you don't see a South African content there, you can say edit a copy and you can create your own just to give you an idea of how it looks. You've got all of this data that you can populate, create your South African content and you will apply those standards. So for now, we're just gonna use the Australian one and hit proceed, hit okay. And you can give it a title if you'd like on the top, but you can see all of the configurations. I can generate the parkings on the left only or on the right only. In this case, I am gonna put it on the right only. I'm gonna tick off the islands for now, and I'm gonna show you how easy this is. So let's say I wanna pop it in there. I click once, I click twice, and I'm done. All right, that is amazing. Can you imagine how much time that saved you? If you were doing it in AutoCAD, you need to draw the line, offset it, set it parallel, those type of things. You've got a blue line at the bottom that shows you the minimum spacing that needs to be adhered to. If you're along a curve, you can use that grip to place it perfectly along a curve, right? And if you want to add a vertex like that, you can always add it. And you can see that the island gets generated based on the parameters. If you wanted to move your parking layout, you've got that grip there. And if you wanted to create it, create it in an angle, you can also do that using the grips. I literally did that in like probably four seconds, right? Click, click, and it was done. So there's a lot of different groups you can explore in your time. Let's go and add in another row, all right? You could have set this by default, but I just left it off on purpose so that you can see we always come back here. Hit OK. And let's use both this time, all right? So I'm going to leave it on both and let's drop one there. One click, two clicks, and we're done. Escape. Here we are. Now I. You can see it generated the islands for me on the left and right hand sides automatically, which is great. I can then go and edit this again if I want to. I can even edit the, the islands. So if I wanted to make it a bit weird, I could have angled it. And if I wanted to add more rows, I'll hit the plus sign like you've seen there. Not only that, we can customize those rows. So let's go and edit the six rows that I've inserted on the left. We'll go and select it, and we will click on the base. You can see those quick square checkers. And we're gonna change it to disable parking for accessibility, and we will hit copy. And all I've gotta do now is just click on those parking bays, and I'm done. I just want you to process, if you were doing this in AutoCAD, how much of time it would have taken you, right? Blocks and offsets and copies and lines and parallels and all of those things, right? And let's go and snap some along the other side. So again, I will just show you something that typically happens in your design. So if you forget to set it, whether it's on the left-hand side or on right-hand side, as you can see, we have made a mistake there. We did, we're doing the parking lots on both sides. Now I am doing this very quickly. I'm not snapping to exact portions, but if I did my curves and polylines correctly, you should have a starting of the curve, the ending of the curve, and a midpoint, which will allow you to snap to that curve absolutely perfectly. So let's say my parking layout is like so. I can then go and adjust this by the curve. This will not be exactly now because I'm just showing you the methodology. I'm not looking at accuracy at the moment, but I can go and literally snap this to a midpoint of that curve so it follows it correctly. Now you might have experienced this, especially in AutoCAD, if you're doing it manually, how tedious this might be, okay? You can see um, if I drag that grip or I can go and switch on my midpoint snap, I can go and select that plus sign, drag it, or even the arrow, and now we can actually go and stretch or scale whatever you want to, but your snaps are on. You can see it does it there. And I can just use those plus signs to fit it quite nicely to that curve. Again, you can see it's not 100% yet because I'm just snapping frantically a little bit. But if you did your curve correctly, you can see you can literally get 100% of that. And just to give you an FYI, if you're going to go try this out, Go and try the parallel row. If you selected that line, it should have auto-generated it according to your polyline geometry without you clicking on it. All right, so <laughs> that is literally the parking. I mean, 
Uh, you could have also applied uh, striping and those type of things on the roundabout. The methodology is the same. I'm going to leave that to you to do. Now, let's say you wanted to export the striping to uh, InfoWorks, for example. I'm going to do it just for a small part, and I'm not going to import it into InfoWorks today because I really want you to come and see how the final 3D model looks in part five. So let's go have a look. Now, we've got our model set out. Let's say we're happy with what we see on the screen. We will need to explode those lines and then export it to a shape file. But do not save your model expl as exploded. So once you export it, you explode it and you export it, don't save your model um, because we don't want the objects to be exploded in our design model. We just need it for visualization purposes for the striping. So let's have a look. So here we are, we've got all of our parking. Before we continue, let's just correct this one. So if I go there, edit parking row, I select the row and I only want it on the left. So if I make a mistake, again, you can see it's on the wrong side. I hit apply, right, apply, and here we are. Now it looks correct. So very visually nice. So if you don't know what you're doing, you can actually see what's going on depending on your design. You can see even our spacing is quite good with the blue lines being away from those parking lots. So I can literally go and select all and explode them like I've done there. You can see now they've become normal poly lines. And let's say I wanted to export, I could have selected all, but I'm gonna just select this portion here, right? So that the export will be a bit quick. So let's say I wanted those rows there. I will use the map export function. So if I type in map export in my command line in Civil 3D, it will give me the option to export it to whichever I like. You can use an SDF, uh, but I'm gonna use a shape because most people are familiar with shape. I can put it on my desktop, give it a name. Um, let's just say marking, right? Hit okay. And when the marking is done, this is going to be a line file, right? So it's going to be lines. You can load profiles if you need it. If there were metadata or attributes, you could select them. And you can see the coordinate system goes through with it, which is brilliant. So the positioning is going to be on point. So I'm going to hit OK. You can see it starts exporting my entities. And that's it. You've got your shape file. So if you try this before part five, if you want to go and give it a shot, Go and import your shapefile into InfoX and let me know what you get probably on LinkedIn or via email, right? So this is going to be used for visualization in part five. Now, let's get to the transportation part of it. So applying swift part analysis to simulate vehicle movement and check design suitability. Now, what I mean by this is I always use a roundabout because it gets the point across much more clearly. So let's say you do a roundabout and we know that normally trucks have a bit of a problem, right? Because you might find there's an oversteer, um, the wheel tracking goes on the pave on the paving and the curbs and those type of things. You can actually check it by using vehicle simulation. In this case, we're going to be using a normal passenger car because there's a lot of um, videos on the net using a normal like a truck with a trailer so you can find a lot of content i'm trying to be a bit different so we're going to use a normal passenger car so you can see how it looks so let's have a look so we're going to use the roundabout here and we're going to go to auto drive now when you click on this button it gives you a demonstration so south african cars are here so sanrel um vehicles are here. However, you can use any of those libraries because the cars are shipped and manufactured throughout the world. So the spec should be the same. So I'm just going to keep it local and we'll go South Africa. You can see as you click on a different vehicle, the right image updates. So we're going to use a passenger car and we're going to hit proceed. And once we hit proceed, we can drop in our car. So here we are. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on what we call, these are called target points into the software. I am gonna click along the path which I feel that the car is gonna be going, right? So you're gonna try and simulate 
it as much as you can. As you can see, as I zoom out or turn, it picks up the swept part being green being the envelope that the car is producing and red being the wheel tracking. So if you see two different lines in that envelope, those are the colors. So I'm gonna go around the roundabout. Again, it's a single lane because it's an office park, so we don't need anything major. And as you can see there, that look doesn't look right on the envelope, but we're gonna show you how we can edit it. And the car is gonna exit there. All right, now let's zoom into that portion. So how do you edit it? Now the X are your target points. We can move it so it looks much more natural. So you can see as I do that, here we go. Now we've got a smooth transition. I am not taking responsibility for the drivers, right? But we try to give them benefit of the doubt. You can see here, I just need to probably add another point that looks a bit weird, if I could use that word. And that's where the plus signs come in. So if I click a plus sign, I can now add an additional target point. And you can see the X now presents itself. That looks much more gradual. And we now have our swip part to actually help us out. You can see the red lines. If I zoom in, you've got the green being the envelope, the red being the vehicle wheel tracking that you would normally see that's based on your steering movements. So this is a very pretty good simulation, right? It gives you much more insightful design. If you did this with a huge truck, uh, you might see that it might just fit or it, you might have some wheel tracking that needs to be accompanied for where you would need to increase the radii for your roundabout. You can also do this for T intersections, four-way intersections, checking whether the radius, the turning radius is sufficient for your large car or your most heavy vehicle tra traffic that is gonna be transcending that road. So now that we've got the vehicle part done we've got our simulation of what we think will be the best fit or should be the predicted behavior of a driver going along that car along that path rather now we can actually go and simulate it all right to have a 3d representation so let's go have a look now this is a fun part of it so i can go to the animate button on the top ribbon and you've got different options here. You can create snapshots and you can get a 3D. So the block being 3D, you can see the car is there. And we can switch to a different camera part. You can see there's driver's eye, there's different types. And if I hit play, you can see it starts off very slow, but if I hit forward a bit, it moves at a good pace. I can zoom in, I can zoom towards it. I can change my view. If you've been playing PlayStation or Gran Turismo, you can change to first player view, right? You can actually see how it looks going along the roundabout, all right? And we can change that maybe back to passenger car. And we can adjust the views depending on the heights. And of course, we can actually zoom in, zoom out to more of a plan view. We can do a focal length. And you can actually go and zoom in even towards the bottom of the car. I'm not sure why you would do that, but you can. And let's play this again. So I can even go backwards or in reverse. But in this case, let's just go forwards. Um, you can see the car is moving along there. I want to zoom into the, we the wheels. So you can see actually the, the tracking, right? So just pay attention to the wheels. So you can see it's currently locked. That's a front wheel drive. It's got the curve, but see what happens when I exit the roundabout, okay? Just wait, can you see it turned, right? So the, the wheel tracking is a real cool thing. That's the thing that if you're a transportation engineer or if you do roads and highways like myself, that's a very big part of design to show you that the axle as, is very suitable to your design and so on. And that's about it. I kept it a bit light, not very technical heavy as my other webinars, but vehicle tracking is really a very straightforward software to learn. So let's wrap things up and get you going with your Friday and your weekend vibes. So today's takeaways is I showed you how to check or in integrate GIS using Map3D, ArcGIS, Civil3D and InfraWorks. 
how you can link into an online SQL or an online database or an ArcGIS online. If you have access to a SQL database or SQLite, those type of things. If you have a login, you can integrate that directly using Map3D by connecting to your FDOs. You can also bring in the raw data file. So if you just receive the file, you can import your shape or SDF into Civil 3D directly, into InfraWorks directly, which will give you in InfraWorks a 3D representation of your services or whatever you're importing, as well as the exact positioning in Civil 3D and InfraWorks. Then we looked at the parking layouts, how easy it was to actually generate, how you could insert single bays, double bays, disable parkings, islands, correcting it if it's a bit off. Like you said, like you've seen, we've generated double where we needed a single parking bay and we were able to correct that visually on the screen. You can apply your standards. And if you're stuck with standards, you can go into the Autodesk Knowledge Network and create your own standards. We then showed you how to export your file in a shape format that's going to be used in part five of the webinar. Again, if you want to go ahead and try it for yourself, give it a shot. You're going to see my uh, contact details just now. You can let me know how it goes. And of course, we looked at swept path analysis where we drew the perceived flow or perceived path that the vehicle should take along the roundabout. And then we checked it to see if it's going to fit. In this case, it did. Normally, you will find if you use a very large vehicle in a very tiny roundabout or what we call a mini roundabout, you will see that the tracking goes on the paving, on, the, on those type of things. So you don't want that. You want to negate that as much as possible. So this is your review tool. And once you're happy with what you see, you can actually animate it just for a much more visualistic confirmation. Um, you can also export that if needed, all right? So that's what we covered. So if you want to reach us, Baker Bench, we are very social. We are on the main social handles. So LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. If you just type in Baker Bench, like most people do, no one really uses links that much unless you're emailing it to someone. But if you just type in Baker Bench, search us, subscribe, or follow us, you will be in contact with us all the time. We have a lot of events this year, unfortunately, most all of them being virtual, but we only have a lot of uh, customer facing or user facing uh, events that we normally have. Hopefully next year we will have a lot so I can meet you a lot all in person. Um, but for now it's all virtual, so they are free to attend. So please follow us. There are also a number of webinars hosted by the professionals in our team in architecture, structural, those type of things that you can learn for free. So also subscribe or follow us on LinkedIn and on YouTube, uh, Facebook, where we post this so you can register and also reshare them. Uh, thanks to all of the users. I've seen that a lot of my posts have been reshared for this webinar series. And that's why our attendance is absolutely great. Um, just to give you insight, it's free learning. So if you want to help others and, you know, get people on board, share it. I mean, it's free. We all want to empower each other and we want to be better at what we do. And this is the perfect place to do it. Last but not least, or second last, designers assemble, let's connect, right? So if you want to connect with myself, I am Shu Ebunis. Like I said, I'm a BIM technical specialist for civil infrastructure and mining at Baker Baines. You can search me on LinkedIn if you don't have me already, Shu Ebunis. Uh, I love to connect with people and chat up with fellow industry professionals, designers, or if you want to drop me an email, if you really like the webinars you're seeing, uh, you can always drop me your, your input. It keeps us really motivated, as well as criticism. If you want something a bit more in detail, or if there's something you want to be added or changed in the format it's done, drop me an email. I've got a very thick skin, um, so and we can incorporate your feedback. It's very, very valuable. And uh, yeah, also, if you want to reach out and there's something you're grappling with, Hit me up on LinkedIn or on email. Let me know what you're struggling with. Maybe we could have a webinar on it in the future. So anything civil infrastructure design, I'm your guy. If you're going, if you want to go product specific, these are my primary focus. So civil 3D, InfraWorks, Recap, Vehicle Tracking, AutoCAD, 
laser scanning, BIM 360 docs, and also build and design for Civil 3D. Secondary focus is more on the, on the build side or vertical construction, so advanced steel, rivet structures, robot structures, and Navis works. Other focuses, if you're looking at hardware, it's BLK360, the Topcon 3D scanning, as well as clear edge edge wires, which is fantastic for point cloud ge geometry extraction. And last but not least, webinars, recordings are all uploaded to Baker Bain's YouTube channel. I also post them on LinkedIn when they are uploaded, so you can always reshare them as well as click on the link. Now, a very great thing that I'm very proud to be or very fortunate and privileged to present at is Autodesk University. Now, this is a global event. There were over 2,300 applications worldwide, 54 countries, and I had the privilege of being accepted. So I will be representing the South, Afri South Africa as well as the African continent. So I really would appreciate if you guys could join me on this. If you just type in Autodesk University into your Google or whatever browser you use, click on the website, your first result, and register for free. There's going to be over 750 sessions, all free, all free learning, all upskilling from intermediate, from fundamentals to right up to advanced. And my session is titled Refining the Scan to Burn Workflow for Further Autom Automation and Visualization. It's going to be a really, really fun session. And just a heads up, if you can get yourself or get your hands on a VR headset, please keep it close by when you're watching my session because uh, I haven't told this to anyone yet, but on the webinars, it's, since it's getting close and it's next month, I am gonna take a model from Revit and you, if you scan it with the QR code on your phone and if you got like a headset that you would normally get like a Samsung headset or I just use a normal VR head box that you would get anything. It doesn't have to be fancy. As long as you have a headset, you can put your phone in and you can actually look around the model yourself on the other side of the screen. So please join. Um, I would really appreciate your support. And the technologies we're going to be showcasing is, first of all, the Leica BLK360 for laser scanning, how it works. Autodesk Recap Pro for point clouds, Revit and Nav Navisworks for the modeling and VR part of it, and as well as clear edge 3D edge wise for the point cloud geometry extraction. So please come and support me and come and learn for free from myself as well as other professionals worldwide. I always learn a ton of this, even though being in the design specialization for quite some time, there's always so much more things you can learn from people throughout the world doing real good stuff, making an impact on the world um, and very, very great innovation, especially when it comes to like uh, Python, Dynamo, automation. There is some real cool stuff. So I really hope to see you there for my session as well as a lot of the other users. So that brings me to my q and I'm gonna open up the floor now so, and I'll also check the chat box. So give me a second. Um, if you will have any questions, please drop it into the chat box or even some feedback. If you found the session great, drop it into the comment section. I will really, I'll read you out and give you a shout out. So it will really be uh, a good thing to guiding us on the series. Uh, we have received great feedback for part one and part two. Also, it had been very technical heavy, so we just dialed it down a bit for this session. But I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to drop something into the chat box of either what you thought of the session or if you have any question it doesn't have to be related to what you've seen today Pre preferably yes but if there's anything regarding the civil collaboration series part one part two or what's coming up you can always drop that into the chat box so i'll give you a few seconds to do that while i scroll through what i see here Okay, we have a question regarding parking standards. I knew this will pop up. How do you create it? All right. As you've seen on my screen, you can go and right click and copy an existing standard, rename it and put in your values. So if you're in South Africa, if you go to the legislations that we use, you can type in the exact values that you wanna use and the software will then 
use that as your uh, guide. You can set it then as a default. That default will be applied to your design parking standards, the width of your base, the length, those type of things, as well as the island generation. If you're not too keen on doing the islands, you saw that you can switch them off or toggle them off. And those designs will then be applied to your drawings, okay? So please have a look at it. Um, also, if you go onto the Autodesk Knowledge Network online, or if you click on the help file that's in the vehicle tracking uh, question mark or in all of the Autodesk software, it will give you a step-by-step -step on how you can do that. If you still don't come right, I will leave my, my slide on again for my contact details. You can drop me an email, we can have a chat. Okay, thank you for that question. All right, another one is, can you export the, the 3D video that you do or the simulation? Yes, you can. So there is a button there where you can export it to, it's an AVI format, a format that I'm not really uh, happy with. It, it does work, don't get me wrong. It's just the file size on an AVI gets ridiculously big sometimes. Um, whereas if you could have exported it to an MP4, it's much more compact. But definitely you can do that. There is an export button on that floating bar where we set the view. You can export it to an AVI and you can actually share that with whoever you need to. All right, so good question there. Hmm, another question, I see 3DS Max is coming in here. Okay, so the question is, can we create better visualizations? So the answer is yes, okay. Now, what you're seeing in Civil 3D, you can render to a certain degree, but it's not the best tool to render in. Remember, Civil 3D is a detailed design tool, and we have created InfraWorks for the more visual appealing uh, type of pitch. So if you want to do any simulations that are of a highly realistic nature, you would use 3ds Max and InfraWorks or just 3ds Max. Now, the reason why I say this is 3ds Max will give you up to like a 4K quality if you want to go real, real deep in, or it'll give you a real nice visualization where you could literally animate your vehicle. You can do multiple vehicles as well. You can do the same in Civil 3D but the quality of the render will, will be amazing in 3ds Max. If you're not um, up to scratch with 3ds Max, there is a playlist on YouTube for 3ds Max and Civil 3D. However, I would say the best place to go is CAD Learning. It has a step-by-step -step from beginner. It will ease you in because these videos that you see on YouTube are by people that are really jacked up on the software. And they don't look at the basics sometimes. They just fly into the actual segment. So to avoid that frustration that you might face, try and check out CAD Learning. You can download a trial if you don't have access to it on our Baker Baines website. Or you can drop me an email. I can send you all of the relevant info. Again, um, also InfraWorks is much more easier to use for the visualization. But when it comes to animation part of it, you will need both 3ds max and infraworks okay thank you for that that was a good question actually okay there's another one <laughs> can you create your own custom vehicles yes you can it's a bit of a process right but you definitely can, again, the steps are outlined on the Autodesk Knowledge Network or in the help file of Autodesk Vehicle Tracking. What we normally do is, or where I've applied this was in the mining industry. So you would get a lot of uh, CAT and Volvo and those type of huge trucks that you would use on, an, on a huge mine where the tires are literally higher than you, than you standing. And, and you've got some of them that are built into the vehicle tracking interface. Like I said, you don't have to select that by country because those vehicles are exported throughout the world. So you just need to go and look for a model. If you have a variation of the model, so I was doing, I can't remember the exact Volvo uh, model, but we needed to modify the dimensions of the skipper and those type of things so that 
it was a bit bigger. So we created a copy of it, or I created a copy of it, edited the dimensions as per the spec supplied by the supplier, saved it, and I had a real representation of that vehicle. A lot of uh, online providers have the vehicles created, which if you Google, which I've done, I try to do that, but you have to pay for them. They are a subscription service. So if you wanted an actual 3D model of that, you needed to download it, but you would have to pay for it. However, if you want to go and edit it, log on to the Autodesk Knowledge Network or the AKN, that's what we call it, you will get enough data there that will help you out. But thank you, that also is a good question. I see you guys are awake on Friday, this is great. Um, anyone else? I'm just trying to scroll here to see if I've missed any of the questions. <laughs> okay, the, uh, this is the last question, I think. Uh, what can we see on part four and five? Uh, I don't know if I should give you that. Okay, part four is not cast in stone yet, but I can tell you part five is gonna be very, very visual, okay? We're gonna be using Navisworks and InfraWorks, and we're gonna do some VR stuff there as well. So as you can see in my Autodesk University session, I'm gonna be using VR to check the model out um, as a panoramic uh, stereo type of thing. We will apply the same thing in December, all right? But this, this model here will be much more better than the one that I have done in um, Autodesk University, like much more components. I wouldn't use the word better, but much more infrastructure components. So if you can borrow a headset or if you bought a phone and it came with a headset, um, try and get one for the university session as well as for December. I will create a render that you all can access, scan on your QR phones and pop into your cell phone. If you don't have a VR headset, you can still scan it on your phone, but you will have to move it like with your hand. Um, so you can actually move to the left and right, up and down. Okay, I think that is it. I have covered all of the questions. Thank you. I will leave my our details again. If you have any questions, pop them to my email address. Uh, there's it there, shuaib at bakerbeds.com. Or you can hit me up on LinkedIn if you already have me, and we can take it from there. So. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope that this was a very useful webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. And stay tuned for part four that will be coming up soon. Have a great day and enjoy, everyone.